Hello, I'm Denise Durson, Executive Editor of ProBuilder, and my guest today is Scott Sedam, President of consulting firm True North Development. Welcome, Scott. Hi, Denise. Nice to be here. Happy to have you. Your topic for discussion today is on-site versus off-site construction methods, and you say that off-site construction has been on the verge of revolutionizing home building for a long time, yet its promise remains unfulfilled. Why is that? It's a it's an interesting complex question, but I think I think I've kind of honed down in uh, working on this issue for many many years. One of the one of the primary reasons I real quickly to my old and anecdote, uh, Bill Pulte uh, would be uh, I guess it'd be thirty three years ago this January. I was in a Bill Pulte session, and uh, he said that uh, that manufacturing processes that will revolutionize the whole building industry. And he helped me, he says, are about this far from taking place. Now, this was 33 years ago. So, and he said, it's been that far since the end of World War II, that far. And uh, I saw Bill oh, about, oh, I saw a year before he passed away. So that would be about four years ago now. Mm -hmm. So we're talking uh, 28 years after he said this much. And we were catching him up and I visited him. And I said, hey, Bill, remember what you said about... Uh, you know, this far from revolutionizing home builder, holding the manufacturing process, how far is it now? And he kind of sat back and smiled and he said, about this far. <laughs> and uh, he just kind of shook his head. And what's ironic, if you go back to the, the uh, Sears and Roebuck houses, they shipped in boxcars starting, I think, in about 1912. And they stopped uh, in 1940 when World War II was breaking out and the, all their production capacity got used for other things. But, you know, they'd shipped the whole house in a boxcar, pre-cut, labeled, including shingles and the, you know, when they say everything but the kitchen sink, it had the kitchen sink. Everything in that house. And you see, when you know the look, you see those Sears Craftsman houses. I actually grew up in one through fifth grade in Indiana. You see them everywhere. They are everywhere. And they were great houses great houses today, and we still haven't gotten back to quite that level of sophistication. There's one of the big companies, I can say the name, BMC has a great process called ReadyFrame, and it works really well. It's a great process, but in reality, it's not as sophisticated as the Sears homes that were being built in 1912. So how much progress have we made? What's different today is there is so much money being invested in uh, the manufactured processes. It's incredible. Uh, we've had several ways of this in the past, but there hasn't been as much money behind it. And there's things that happened, you know, the big bankruptcy uh, that happened recently that everybody knows about. They went through, I don't know, billion three or something. Uh, so uh, there's been a whole lot of money, but there's a lot of money going through things that are look really good, like they're working. And that's what's different combined with the trade shortage, the demand to really see manufactured process of work is really high. So to, to get at why it hasn't caught on, uh, I want to do a few things real quick, big picture. And, uh, and I got to, if you uh, email, uh, you can do scott at truen, T-R-U-E-N.com or info truen.com. If you just say something about send uh, articles or send columns, on offsite versus onsite. I have a series of columns that gets into more detail about this. But I wanna first take you from, from the most complex form down to the smallest form, just to set that picture about what we're talking about. The most complex would be fully modular, where it comes out of the factory and comes to your site, crane sets it on a foundation. And there are even you know modular type of foundations out there. Uh, which can speed you up a lot, but you set it on the foundation, hook some things up, you know, uh, maybe you tie some roof pieces together, get the electric uh, set up right, uh, and uh, you're you're good to go. And those houses can literally be ready in, in just a few days. Uh, coming back from that, you have what you call, you know, off-site assembly and on-site erection, which is components of that house, major pieces of that house. Uh, like there's a very radical young company, a bunch of sharp young people in California doing these cores. The cores have all the stuff in them and then you, you can build on or you could also purchase the different 
uh, elements for bedrooms and you know family room and stuff that go on to it but the core comes out with the mechanicals and kitchens and bathrooms it's a really interesting concept so there's various forms of that going on uh, then there's pre-cut and labeled frame packages uh, there's various ones out there the one that's best known is bmc ready frame and so they're cutting it all uh, pre-cut and it's all etched with labels. So it's literally almost like a Lego. That's easier than a Lego because Legos <laughs> don't have A fits in B on them. These actually have that, you know, part 22, six B fits in 22, six here. So that really speeds things up from a framing point. Uh, the quality is phenomenal, almost no waste. Um, then you have what I call conventional combinations, which could be any mix of factory built components. It could be as simple as stairs. Uh, we don't, I don't know what percentage of the stairs are built off site in this country. I wonder if anybody knows, uh, but it's probably something like 20%, maybe I'd guess when our travels around the country we see where the stairs came come in and pre-built and they're just hanging it in there. Uh, and it gets then into the, the last few categories, uh, combinations of things that everybody knows, roof trusses. Uh, we still have places in the country where roofs are stick built. And, uh, and a lot of times builders have good reasons for doing that. Uh, but uh, many times when we really do a complete analysis, which is what we're gonna be talking about in a second, how you do that, a lot of times uh, we find out that if you do know how to measure true total cost, uh, substituting uh, trusses for stick building more often than not does work. Then we have wall panels, which have just come and gone, come and gone, come and gone. Uh, some of the big issues of wall panels is getting the frames or getting the foundation straight enough to use them. Uh, that's really too bad that that's the situation, but it's that's reality. A lot of builders will tell you. And uh, I was saw some uh, last week. We were doing a, a week long lean in Michigan, uh, and those uh, foundations were absolutely beautiful, with no waste of concrete. The foundation sprays and arrows, so people can do it. They absolutely can do it, but uh, that can be a real uh, tough call in some places. And then we have the uh, engineered or precast foundations uh, and uh, companies of, uh, there's several different brands available out there and you can have a foundation, you know, you put in a footer, you set the foundation in and it can be ready to go backfilled, ready to build on literally in two days, uh, theoretically even one day, but two days is pretty common. And then various uh, sub components you think of, uh, you can buy stoops that are precast or pre-built. You can buy dormers, <laughs> one of my least favorite things, fake dormers, uh, but you can buy those all day long already made. You set them out there on the house. Even things like uh, stoops for your, or for your air conditioner, pads for your air conditioner. You know, the various components like that. Uh, uh, and, you know, most places now use uh, the terminology, most people use box cabinets. So we got a cabinet built in the factory and it comes in a box to put it in. But there are still some markets, Kansas City is one of them, where the great majority of the cabinets are built, stained, painted, finished, all on site, in the kitchen, in the bathrooms. Uh, that seems hard to believe, but that there are some markets where they do that and they say it saves them money. Uh, but you can go down the ro road not very far to another market and they, they look at you like you're out of your mind if you if you say other people do that. So this is what's fascinating about the business. You go from city to city to city to city. Everywhere you go, it's different. This week I was in uh, Bend, Oregon. And uh, I, you know, I've walked as many houses as anybody I know. And I've been at, at walking houses the last, I think, five consecutive weeks, five, five different builders. Uh, with COVID opening things up. And as I've been walking houses for 32 years and I'm a pretty observant person. And each one of those builders, I saw something I'd never seen before. So oh. that it just fascinates. That could be an interesting column, couldn't it? I agree. So, uh, if someday, if the day comes where I don't see anything, maybe then I'll think I should retire. <laughs> so here's the thing that I think is holding this stuff up in so many ways. And I have one of the the columns I wrote has a lot more detail, but we have to really cover this pretty quickly today. But I just want you to provoke and get you thinking. 
when people compare cost in anything, they look at labor, they look at material. Sometimes they look at process, which includes overhead, trips to building site, the things that go with it, impact on, on the next trades following. Uh, and, but, but generally speaking, you don't see too much of that. You were just looking at what's that bid price? And this industry, like we all know better, we know that bid price is not the same as total cost, or as I've taken as saying, true total cost. To try to emphasize that people, you're going to get all the way down to nitty gritty. I think I may have done on a previous podcast this example of a mason. This happened to be in the Detroit area, who pointed out to the builder that they were putting porches on these uh, found on these. Uh, elevations now. They decided to go to porches with some craftsman columns, update the look. Uh, so new facade. Well, they had been doing a waistline or some people call wainscot brick all the way around to the house. And the uh, mason came in and he pointed out that now we're putting porches on these houses. You, he said, no lo vero, no lo vero, which means, and I, my Spanish is okay. And I said, you can't see it. He says, yeah, can't see it. And he's all excited and tell us about it. And his uh, English was a little shaky, but we were getting through it. He, he was really, really sharp. And uh, it was amazing what he turned. He turned up a thousand dollars worth of savings idea just this wow. reason. He was amazing. But his point was that we're still putting the brick on these houses under the porches and nobody can see it. Why are we putting brick under there? Someone crawls, an exterminator crawls under the spray of foundation, and he's going to go, oh, there's no brick, like anybody cares. And still pouring the brick ledge to hold the brick, which is more money. So, you know, we're, we're looking at the, the cost of doing things. Very few builders will actually take things like that into consideration. So here's the factors you got to look at. And I have 12 of them, and we're going to go fast. And you got to look at the design issues, okay? And how the design, if you're going offsite versus onsite, things you have to change about the design, depending on what components. And an example would be, uh, you know, brick ledge or not. Uh, but if you're doing components, uh, uh, like if you're doing the stairways, you're gonna set up the cavity for that stairwell, stairwell a little different than if you're building it. If you're doing panels, you know, you're gonna be doing different things with the foundations. So we get a, you have a whole long list of those, but their impact on design. And if you're, if you're doing, components, how does that affect your ability to do the design factors you want? Uh, I tell you, oh, five, seven years ago, it was rare to see a tray in a house that was built in to the truss. Now people are doing it all the time, but, but they're also doing it, but they're grossly overbuilding them too and burying a lot of wood that doesn't do anything. Uh, but that's an example of something that depending on your truss plants, some of them are real good at doing that stuff and some of them, some of them aren't. So that decision on components can affect. Uh, same with panels with a lot of the other uh, ways you can do it. Uh, second, direct labor material. That's when everybody looks at and is obvious. But uh, clearly, if you do uh, a panel versus stick building the walls on site, there's going to be a difference in the direct labor material. Now, what's ironic is, generally speaking, and if any of the panel plant guys uh, uh, hear me this, they may not be happy about it, but it's actually, it's a good thing if they're the ones who do it. Most of the panel plants, I see their work, they are not efficient in their building and their layout of their panels. Hmm. Often not as efficient as some of the stick builders. You know, go figure, uh, yeah. ironic. Uh, it'd be as if Ford or GM or Chrysler wasn't efficient building a car in a factory as someone hand building one. You couldn't, wouldn't ever imagine that to be true, but we see it all the time. So if you are, listen to this, and you're a panel plant builder, if you do that, you've got a genuine competitive advantage. It, make sure you're selling it. Uh, so that's a really, uh, a really important issue. Uh, cycle time. Here's something that almost nobody tracks and, and does a, an accurate figure of the impact. But shorter cycle times are all about your absorption of fixed cost and your use of capital. If we can build them in 90 days instead of 180, I can do the same number of homes with half the capital. Or I can do twice as many homes as you do 
in 180 days, which is much more efficient use of my capital. So it makes a massive difference and everything gets better. Uh, the quality gets better, the efficiency of your trades, everything gets better. Uh, but it's tougher these days with the trade shortage and the material shortage. It is harder, but that is gonna get better. As a matter of fact, the, the trade shortage is a lot of what's driving this greater movement toward manufacturing processes. Um, we do have something called the uh, save day calculator. And if you send me this, we'll send you the Excel template for that. You can plug in all your numbers and you're gonna see the true value of a save day and your eyes are gonna pop out of your head uh, because it's a lot more than you think it is. And when you're trying to decide, should we do trust or not? Should we do panel or not? Should we do more components or not? When you take the value of the save day, all of a sudden that equation changes dramatically. And again, few people do it, or if they do, they aren't figuring it, the true total cost of it. Uh, get back to this here. Oh, site waste, that ought to be pretty clear. If we're doing components from offsite, we're going to have less site waste. You're doing three or four, uh, or the equivalent of three or four uh, high site dumpsters, you can get that down typically to one or two. And depending on what your poles are costing, anywhere from $300 to $600, depending on where you are, some places it's going to be going above that. Uh, you can be talking about $1,200, $1,500 just in waste removal uh, from your site. So again, that goes into that equation and makes a, a real difference. Um, overhead administration is a, a huge one. Again, people are not good at calculating this, taking this consideration at all. If I am managing uh, you know, five different companies to get, oh, let's say my, uh, my panels and my, uh, my uh, roof uh, or trusses, and uh, let's say my roof deck, some people will, will send that stuff out, components, some people floor systems. Uh, you can eliminate the number or eliminate, you can reduce the number of suppliers and trades you deal with. That makes things much simpler uh, to administrate and brings down your overhead. Most people won't take that into consideration. It's just, it's simpler. You know, simpler is better if we can do it. You know, and complexity, people forget, complexity does not go up in a direct arithmetic line, okay? It goes up exponentially yeah. as it increases, you know, when you, instead of when you double something, it doesn't increase it by two it, at the square, you know, it starts to go, go, go up. So what the good news is, as you reduce complexity, it comes down faster than that uh, simple slope. So really understanding uh, the impact of that can make a difference in how you're figuring uh, offsite versus onsite. Uh, plan trips. Uh, and differentiate between plan trips and uh, what wasted or what otherwise, if anything went right, would be wasted trips to the building sites. Uh, people often figure out that if we do more component, uh, we will have fewer trips to the building sites. But what they forget about is also the reduction in the wasted trips, which we have oh, 4,500 trades worth of data on this. So 4,500, so I tell people, you wanna argue, great, you know, bring your data though, because we got 4,500 data points. The average cost for an extra trip is 205 bucks and it'll run from 50 to 1,000. You bring a load of trusses out, have to bring it back, or then you're looking at $800,000. You mobilize a foundation crew, you're looking at eight or $900. You're sending a guy out to just tweak the, uh, the louvers on the heating and air system after the, People move in, okay, that might be 50 bucks. One guy stops by for 20 minutes. But they're, they average 200. Uh, there are more than 50 per house. That's a very conservative number. So right wow. there, 10,000 bucks buried under every house in America. And some of them are a lot higher than that. And again, we got cold hard data on that. So if we can reduce both the planned trips it takes to get something done, and in the first place, by having fewer trades, having fewer suppliers, and then we start to reduce the, uh, I got a little note came up on here for some reason, I got rid of that. Um, and we reduce the wasted trips both, we start to see some tremendous cost differences in those. That alone can make your decision different. Then you go to one of my issues I've been harping on for 30 years, uh, VPO. 
And I don't know if you recall, a few years ago, I wrote a series of columns. I was going to write one column on, on variants, and then I wrote two, and then I had a third one, and I was ready to do the fourth one, and you called me and said, Scott, okay, you know, say, you know, we can't do four in a row, on, but, but Denise, it's really important. So anyway, so we have a, uh, we have a, uh, a, a PDF of all the columns on that too, so we'll send that to you. Uh, but here's the deal. Virtually no one in the United States or Canada, and we've also worked in, in uh, oh, Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, we don't, haven't seen anybody doing it anywhere with uh, actually a total of, we had, we had a reason we had to write this down recently, came up with 380 builders counting independent large divisions of builders, 380. So that's a lot of data points. Finding someone, I finally found a couple that do it to a degree, not as deep as we're showing them how to do it, but the true total cost of variance. If you look at any VPO, some people call them FBOs, field purchase order, EPO exception purchase order, or just a variance. They always have the labor and or the material, okay? Uh, someone runs over a, a TGI and breaks it, and they got a hot shot, no one out from the lumber company. Or you're, you're forking up a load of truss and the guy grips it wrong and you, you crack a truss member and they got to replace that. You know, anything that can happen. You know, you got someone goes through the carpet on a house and didn't take off their shoes and, you know, whatever, scratch the countertop. A million things. Everybody get, got the labor, excuse me, and the materials. What virtually nobody tracks is the process cost, which includes the overhead and the impact on schedule. Okay. You might be able to, to get the, that fix squeezed in there, but sometimes these things push a house back a day or two or sometimes a week because yeah. of problems. And if you aren't figuring that in, you don't know your true total cost. If you aren't figuring the administrative portion in, you don't know your cost of both you and the supplier and trade. Right. Now, I mentioned that Mason, uh, he came up with with a, an example, another example in it about a, it was a keystone that they did. They let a customer talk them into it, do a custom keystone over the door, front door that had a little OG around the middle of it, you know, a Fipon thing. Uh, well, from 10 feet away, there's nobody could ever see the difference. And nobody, you could have people walk about 100 houses, half with one, half there. No one would ever come up with that. But the customer wanted, okay, do it for the customer. Custom order, it got lost in the system. Okay, so he said it was about oh, two guys and about 15 bucks. It's about a $30 problem to, that he had to, because of it. We had the team work on this. And after a couple of weeks, they got to work at They identified more than 50 specific steps it took between the builder, the supplier, multiple builder personnel, purchasing, design, construct, the supplier, and back to the mason and talking to the customer about it, it took more than 50 steps totaling well over a thousand dollars. Oh my God. So, and, and people don't measure this stuff. So what seemed like nothing, and then the, the kicker was the Mason said, there's something on virtually every house. There's something that like we that? have a, a lintel, the wrong size, the wrong length, wrong width. And so it started, what, add up to every trades and it's a massive amount. So taking that, the fact that here, if you do more offsite, you are going to reduce VPO. So you need to take variance into consideration. Uh, in process rework, something nobody measures, and this is very difficult to track, which is all the rework that goes on before you have those final walks, quality walks and final walks. You yeah. catch the stuff there, you get trades and you fix it all, okay? Most builders do track that and good, but they got to track the number and the dollar value because I could have a, a hundred paint touch-ups, but that's not going to come near the value of a water leak coming to the second floor and gets into the family room. It's going to cost dramatically more. So these kind of issues, you got to be looking, are we going to eliminate any of that by doing more component? So the in-process rework will drop with components and you got to try to put a value on it. Some of the stuff is very tough. Uh, one of my favorite Dr. Deming quotes, the world's foremost, foremost quality guru, he actually died 30 years ago. 
Mm. this year 21 30 i can't believe that and i was fortunate to get to know him and he would say some of the most important numbers for management are unknown and unknowable but you still got to really try hard to get your arms around them and the next one's a perfect example the true total cost of warranty okay i you what's the labor for material we can do that all day long if we think about work we ought to be able to come up with a process the overhead part of that too almost no one does but that can be done without too much work but here's what we can't track what's the impact on the customer if the customer is upset with the warranty issue and you've come three times and this happened and that happened, it's still what they want. And they have the soccer board meeting that week, that night, or a church committee meeting or at work in the lunchroom, they're telling everybody about Ace Homes. And uh, what's the dollar value of that? We can't put a number on it except we know it's a big deal. So really understanding, and you should, some people say, yeah, we tried, it didn't work, but it should reduce warranty to the degree we do more components. And finally, uh, use of things like equipment on the site. For example, if we go to trusses instead of stick built, there are people who do it without a crane. If you've got a small army of guys handing up trust, it, it's not a good and safe way to do it. You're so much better at having some type of a crane or lift. You can do it with a high-low, however people do it. But uh, doing it by hand with, a, with an army of guys handing them up, you're looking for workers' comp claims. You're looking for accidents, trust up, breakage, rework. I've seen it done. There's people who can do it, but don't recommend it. So if you're doing the true total cost, there's my timer. Sorry about that. I tried to turn that off. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it's still going. Stop. There we go. So, okay. So uh, if you're doing the trust, you've got to take into consideration now, maybe you're someone who keep, has a crane around for other things, uh, for panels. It's a lot easier, quicker with a crane. That's easier to do by hand. But if you have, you know, you can do panels 60 feet long. Uh, that's going to be awful tough to do by hand. So maybe you have, you have the crane for that and that, and you can amortize it over more stuff. But anything it takes in addition to do it, uh, then you got to add the cost of that in. So there's 12 things you got to be looking at. And yeah, the initial bid price, which is the direct labor material, that's right there, right? I think that's our uh, number two on the list. Design was first because you think of design. But we got 11 other things that most people aren't taking into consideration. With, and it doesn't, I'm not saying whether you should do uh, offsite or onsite, but what we're saying is use these factors to get a true total cost comparison and your your decisions are going to become pretty easy then and you can back it up a hundred percent um and make the right decision so that's my story that's and it's a great one but i have to ask you at, at this point try to be like bill pulte now and tell us how long it's going to take for builders to be using off-site more more than and on. I think you're going to see a very significant movement in, in the next three to five years. I think even each year, I think a year from now, more and two, and it's going to really start to take off more and more because, you know, I'm on the board of trustees for Home, Bu Home Building Institute, which is the biggest uh, purveyor of trade training in the country by far. And we're doing all sorts of cool stuff, you know, the academies, and there's a lot of great stuff happening. But even if we, the, the output triples or quadruples, it's not going to be enough. And, uh, you know, political considerations, uh, it's getting uh, immigrations, getting trickier and harder. Yeah. Uh, and so we're not going to solve this. Uh, you know, we have builders who are actually stopping production, stopping sales because of the of trade shortages. And other ones who are, they keep doing it and they push their customers out and have customers unhappy. Uh, it looks like things might be slowing a bit, but of course, if you compare it to last year, last year was kind of weird year coming out of COVID. So you go back two years ago, I think it's about the same I saw uh, of two years ago. So maybe, maybe it hasn't in reality, except for last year, the bizarre year of 2020 slowed that much. But uh, the, there is so much need for it. Uh, we had a builder uh, 
I guess I shouldn't, I'm not going to even say, I'll just say it was in the Southeast that left the trust company that uh, just a couple of weeks ago that they had worked with for more than 10 years wow. because they were back to something like 12 or 14 weeks waiting for trusses. Wow. And they found another one that said they could get them down to three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, that time in the schedule is huge with a fortune. Yeah. And what's happening in as trusses as uh, designers, uh, boy, if you're an experienced trust designer now, you can name your price and go anywhere you want in the mm -hmm. country because everybody's having a hard time getting them. Uh, so that relationship is critical, absolutely critical. You know, having said that, I know. Of, a few builders that those relationships are so strong for they're always first in line so they're still getting them but we're going to we're going to solve this uh with just more people we're going to have to get more manufactured so the demand is there and what's different this time i see more money and more technology some of the small companies that are working on some of the uh, computerized systems for things like design and takeoffs to feed into you know, the manufacturing process, uh, I think that's gonna uh, really dramatically m make the, the ease of adoption simpler. So I really believe uh, it's gonna happen this time. Well, I hope so. And hopefully you and I will be around when it, when it does. Yeah, when we can. <laughs> Maybe we'll be around you know, another way. You know, we'll do this. And we're both in our 80s and, and uh, still talking about this stuff. You know, yeah, no, it's, now, it's, now it's this far away. So, anyway, I mean, it, it's a, a, a passion of mine. I, I totally, you know, I work both sides of it. I'm working HBI side, trying to develop more trades. And I'm also doing a bunch of work with companies on the manufacturing and manufactured side. So, so I'm working both sides of it because we need both sides of it. We do. And we'll, we'll look for that for sure. And you'll, you'll be, you will be around to tell us what's I, happening. I, yeah. yeah. My wife. Will, I'm, I'm will pretty sure. Saying, Don't you have somewhere to go when I'm <laughs> 90 and I'll keep going. Well, Deming kept doing it till he was 91. So that's my goal. So. Okay. That Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, thanks so much, Scott. Really appreciate your taking the time to go through this for us. I always enjoy doing them. And uh, send us your, send an email and uh, we'll send you the stuff. Excellent. I'm sure they will. Okay. Take care. Thanks again. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.